Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, I'm going to do a review of the games from today, January 23rd, 2021. First thing I want to go over though, well, two things I want to go over beforehand. First, if you're watching this, thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I drop a new video. And if you're a subscriber watching, thank you for being a subscriber and thank you for watching. Alright. Other than that, first big news of the day, I'm sorry I didn't get a video of this out earlier, but I probably should have, but I, I've been kind of busy today. But today there was a huge trade between Winnipeg and Columbus. I'm sure everybody's heard of it by now. Winnipeg traded Patrick Laine, uh, Jack Roslovic to Columbus, and Columbus sent back um, Pierre-Luc Dubois and a third-round pick. So... Both teams get rid of their disgruntled players, so that's an advantage. We'll see how this works out. I think this one, honestly, it makes Winnipeg a stronger team, and it makes Columbus a far stronger team. So, I think the only downside for Columbus is they lose the number one center for Line, who I believe is just a winger. So, we'll see how this works out. I think this will improve Columbus's offense, which is, honestly, their biggest weakness. Um, Winnipeg, it helps their depth down the center, because now they have, who, who's their first line center? Shifley, uh, Dubois, and Stastny is their third line center. So, and Adam Lowry, I believe, is their fourth line center. So, they're pretty deep at the center position now, and it definitely helps them. And having that younger center, that definitely helps too. Because now if they lose, I believe Stastny is a free agent at this year. So it makes it all the easier losing him. So that's all good. Congratulations to both. I know there are a lot of teams in on Pierre-Luc Dubois, so I guess it's a good or bad thing. Depends on how you look at how he ended his time with Columbus with that god-awful shift that you could tell he just wanted the hell out of there and was trying to get out of there. And his stunt worked. So he's gone. Line has gone, Roslovic's gone, so there you go. They're all on new teams. Hopefully, hopefully they all play better for their new teams. <laughs> all right. Starting out the first game of today was, ironically, Columbus versus Tampa. This one, Columbus looked very good in this game. 5-2 was the win. It definitely looked like they had... The trade happened before this game, and it looked like they had... A lot of crud off their minds finally, and they looked a lot better. So, the scoring opened up 4 10 into the first. Victor Hedman's first of the year from Mitchell Stevens and Alexander Volkov. Uh, about 17, literally 17 seconds later. Nick Felino's third from Cam, Cam Atkinson. And Michael Delzato, still their highest scoring defender. Uh, then at 10 03 of the first. Michael Grigorenko got his first of the year, first with Columbus, from Kevin Stenland and Nathan Gerby. Then at 1946, Andre Palat tied it, his third of the year power play goal from Braden Point and Victor Hedman. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm sorry. At 1901, Vladislav Gavrikov got his first of the year from Liam Foody and Eric Robinson. Andre Palat brought them within one, but it was too late. Third period, Zach Wierenski at 6.34. The third period, Zach Wierenski got his first of the year and his first point of the year. Yeah, him and Seth Jones didn't have anything until this game. So, that's going to help Columbus be a better team from here on out. Uh, Wierenski's goal was from Alexander Texier and Boone Jenner. 18.12, Eric Robinson got his first from Riley Nash and Seth Jones. All right, the shots on goal were 32-28 in favor of Tampa. Faceoffs 51-49 in favor of Tampa. Tampa was 1 for 3 on the power play. Columbus 0 for 2. Penalty minutes were 6-4. Tampa was, or Columbus was 6, I'm sorry. Hits were 24 even. They both had 24. Blocks 9-8 in favor of Columbus. Giveaways both had 4. Vasilevsky was the top goalie, was the goalie, starting goalie. Wow, top goalie. Well, he is the top goalie. For Tampa, but he was the starting goalie. Vasilevsky had 23 saves for 852 save percentage, and Merzlikens for Columbus, 30 saves, 938 save percentage. 
The three stars were Elvis Merzlikens, 30 saves on 32 shots against, 938 save percentage. Zach Wierenski, one goal, even, 22 minutes, 43 seconds of time on ice. Eric Robinson, one goal, one assist, plus two, and 13 minutes, 45 seconds of time on ice. Definitely took advantage of his time. All right. Third straight game of Montreal versus Vancouver. And Montreal won again, 5-2. to two. So that's three straight wins for Montreal or Vancouver. I'm sure Vancouver is saying, why can't we just end this already? Just stop playing against us. Well, the good news is at least Toffoli didn't kill him today. Well, let's start things off. Tyler Myers did not get any supplemental discipline for the hit that he put on UL Armia in the last game. So, three minutes, nine seconds into the game, Tyler Myers fought Joel Edmondson. It was a spirit bout. Uh, Edmondson definitely got the better punches, in my opinion. Um, if you watch it, they'll show it, I'm sure, on like NHL Network, NHL Tonight, and all those sort of things. But they, they talked in the pregame skate, so you knew it was coming. It was just, you had to wait till it did. So, that was the end of it, though. See, if for a lot of guys in the past that have got major injuries because they didn't do this, just take your lumps. Good God. It's like some of those bigger ones in the past could have been avoided if that were done. But, some people just don't want to fight, and... You gotta face consequences one way or the other. Not saying they're right when they get hurt for something like that. It, injuring someone purposely is never the right thing to do. Look at Marty McSorley on Don Brashear. Definitely the wrong, wrong way to react. But, I mean, McSorley never played a game again, so he never got to face the justice on the ice for what he did. He would have definitely faced it. I would not doubt it if five guys had attacked him at the same time. That one was pretty bad, but... Just saying, Myers, he did the right thing. Take your lumps. There you go. It's over and done with. There was no more problems the rest of the night for him. Alright, 10.54 into the first. Nick Suzuki, second of the year from Brett Kulak and Jonathan Drouin. Second period. Corey Perry, first game, first goal for Montreal from Ben Sherratt and Tyler Toffoli. Toffoli still got a point in this game, even though he didn't have a goal. Third period, 3.50 in, Elias Patterson's first from Jordy Ben and Brock Besser. It's amazing to me that Elias Patterson's first of the year. Uh, 6.08 in, Nils Hoglander, second of the year from Nate Schmidt and Bo Horvat. That tied the game at that point. Then at 9.07 in the third, Montreal took over again. Brendan Gallagher, second from Tomas Tatar. Then at 12.44, Jonathan Drouin's first of the year from Josh Anderson's first assist of the year. And Joel Edmondson at 1706 got his first of the year, first with Montreal. All right, stats were 33-25 for shots on goal in favor of Montreal. Faceoffs, Vancouver definitely won that category, 61-39. Both teams 0 for 3 on the power play. Penalty minutes 23 each. Hits 32-20 in favor of Vancouver. Blocks 18-12 in favor of Vancouver. Giveaways 11 2, Vancouver with 11. Carey Price had the win for uh, Montreal. 23 saves, 920 save percentage. Holtby, 28 saves, 875 save percentage in the loss. Carey Price is your number one star. 23 for 25, 23 saves, 25 shots against, 920 save percentage. Jonathan Druhan, one goal, one assist, plus one, and 12 32 at time on ice. Elias Patterson, one goal, Minus one and eighteen thirty nine time on ice. All right, on to Boston versus Philly, and Boston killed them in this one, six to one. What is happening to Hart right now for Philadelphia? I, I don't know what is happening. He has just not been playing well the last few games, and he was pretty frustrated today. And he broke his stick over the post at one point. I, I like what they said on uh, Rogers Sportsnet tonight. I was watching the Winnipeg Ottawa game. The Rogers people they had uh, Brian Burke on. Brian Burke said that what he was said as a GM is that's a three hundred fifty dollars stick, you idiot. <laughs> Which I know for how much these guys make, that's not much. But it's like the team pays for those sticks. It's not the players that pay for them for the most part. So it's like, yeah, that, that cost the team, you jerk. <laughs> I 
But I just thought it was pretty funny what his comment, but moving on. All right, scoring began 8.09 of the first. Patrice Bergeron second. Power play goal from Nick Ritchie and David Krejci. Then at 1.14 of the second period, Kevin Hayes third from Jakob Voracek tied the game at that point. And then it was all Boston from then on. 2.30 into the second, Craig Smith got his first as a Boston Bruin from Charlie Coyle and Jeremy Lazan, I believe it's how that, Lauzon. Lauzon, I think that's how they say it in the feed. Uh, 1750, Charlie Coyle's second from Trent Frederick and Craig Smith. Third period, Brad Marchand second from Patrice Bergeron and Jake DeBrusque. 759 into the third, Brad Marchand's third power play goal from Brett Ritchie. Uh, not Brett Ritchie, wow, he's on a whole nother team now. Nick Ritchie and Jacob or Jakob Zobril. Zaboro? Zaboro, I think it's how it's said. 13.33, Patrice Bergeron's third power play goal from Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy. Which I believe that's McAvoy's first point of the year, which is kind of surprising. Alright, shots on goal. 26.17 in favor of Boston. Faceoffs, 54.46 in favor of Philly. Power play, 0 for 2 for Philly. 3 for 4 for Boston. 75%, that's a pretty good rate for power play. Uh, Pelly miss, 8-4 in favor, or not in favor, I'm sorry. Philadelphia with 8. Hits, 26-24 in favor of Boston. Blocks, 14-10 in favor of Boston. Giveaway, 6-4. Philly was 6. Hart, 20 saves, 769 save percentage. Yikes. Halak, 16 saves, 941 save percentage. Alright, three stars were Brad Marchand, two goals, one assist, plus one, and 16 minutes, 40 seconds of time on ice. Patrice Bergeron, second star, two goals, one assist, plus one, and 16.58 time on ice. Third star, Charlie Coyle, one goal, one assist, plus two, and 14.24 time on ice. Alright, next up is LA versus St. Louis. And St. Louis won this one 4-2. Scoring began 13-12 into the first. Tory Krug got his first goal as a St. Louis Blue. Power play goal from David Perron and Ryan O'Reilly. 57 seconds into the second, Adrian Kempe's third tied the game from Alex Iafalo and Matt Roy. Then at 2.53 of the second, Vince Dunn took the lead again for St. Louis. His first of the year from Robert Thomas and Mike Hoffman. I believe that's Hoffman's first point as a blue. Or do you have a goal already? He might have a goal already. Alright, anyway, 7.25 into the second, David Perron's first of the year from Robert Thomas. Made a two-goal game. 16-29 into the second, Dustin Brown's second of the year, power play goal from Andre Kopitar and Drew Doughty. That made it a one-goal game again. But that was all that St. Louis really needed with a Braun goal because they got empty net in 1958. Jaden Schwartz first from Braden Shen and Ryan O'Reilly. Alright, St. Louis outshot LA 30-23. Faceoffs 56-44 in favor of St. Louis. Power play 1 for 5 for LA and 1 for 2 for St. Louis. So penalty minutes were 10 to 4, St. Louis with 10. Hits 17 10 in favor of St. Louis. Blocks 17 3 in favor of St. Louis. Giveaway is 4 1, LA with 4. Peterson had 26 saves for 897 save percentage for LA. Bennington 21 saves for a 913 save percentage for St. Louis. David Perron is the first star of the game. One goal, one assist, even, and 16.25 of time on ice. Robert Thomas, second star of the game, two assists, plus two, and 12.26 of time on ice. And third star, Tori Krug, with his first goal as a... Did I misspell that? No, I spelled it right. Okay. Tori Krug scoring his first goal as a St. Louis Blue was also even, and 20 minutes and 23 seconds of time on ice. Next game, Ottawa versus Winnipeg. This one had a fight. Six, four, six minutes, four seconds into the first period. Michael Haley versus Nathan Boyu. And honestly, for how good a fighter Michael Haley is, Nathan Boyu held his own. I mean, he, he's, he lost the fight. and he, he had a bit of a cut underneath his left eye, I believe it was, afterwards. But he actually held his own, and I was kind of surprised. I didn't view Boyu as being able to fight or hold his own and fight, honestly. <laughs> so, respect. I'll say that. Respect to him. 
All right, anyways, 1403 into the first. Nikolai Ehlers started the scoring. His third of the year. Power play goal from Neil Pionk and Adam Lowry. Then at 404, the second. Evgeny Dadunov got his first from Nick Paul. This one was just misplayed by, uh, by uh, Connor Hellebuck. He just, I don't know what happened. It was like a one-handed push of the puck towards the net, and it just went between his legs, and he kicked it in. <laughs> It, it, was, it just was a weird goal, but it still counts one way or the other. It doesn't matter. Uh, 818 into the second. Kyle Connors fourth from Blake, Wheeler's, Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. Then at 1114 of the second, Brady Kachuk tied the game again. His second of the year from Austin Watson. And at 1423, Nick Paul scored his second of the year from Artem Anisimov and Mike Riley. And that took, gave them the lead of 3-2 going into the third. Then it was all Winnipeg. 2-24 into the third. Andrew Cobb tied it. His first of the year from Paul Stastny and Nikolai Ehlers. 15-45. The game-winning goal. Paul Stastny's first of the year power play goal from Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. Then at 16-55. Andrew Cobb got his second from Paul Stastny and Dylan DeMello. Before that, though, there was a goal that... Uh, Chris Tierney scored for Ottawa on a deflection that was called back because, uh, who was it? I think it was Dadnoff, actually. He uh, was over the blue line just by a little bit beforehand, so he was offside, so they called it back. Then Andrew Kopp scored that goal. Uh, 1751, Mark Shifley's third from Kyle Connor and Blake Wheeler. Empty netter. So, 6-3 final in favor of Winnipeg. Winnipeg outshot Ottawa 38-21. Face-offs 53-47 in favor of Winnipeg. Uh, power play 0 for 2 for Ottawa, 2 for 3 for Winnipeg. Penalty minutes 11-9. Uh, 11 was for Ottawa. Hits 29-20 in favor of Ottawa. It wasn't a 51 hit game this time, but it still was a heavy hitting game for them. Blocks 14 each. Uh, giveaways 9-6. Ottawa with 9. Goalies were Hogberg for Ottawa, 32 saves, 865 save percentage. Hellebuck, 18 saves for 857 save percentage. All right, three stars were Paul Stastny, one goal, two assists, plus two, and 18, I'm sorry, 1543 a time on ice. Nikolai Ehlers, a goal and assist, plus two, 1324 of time on ice. Then third star, Nick Paul, one goal, one assist, even for 16-32 at time on ice. So, that's all the games for today. Like I said, uh, the big trade for today, that was the huge news. So, if you hadn't seen that, you've now heard about it. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a positive for both teams. I think Dubois is going to do a great job with Winnipeg. We'll see who he lines with. I don't know. Um... But he can also play the left wing, so he may even play there to start. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, but oh, I also forgot to mention, Roslovic signed a two-year deal with with Columbus after the trade. So he will, they all have to quarantine now. I think, I think the one, I think Line and Roslovic only had to do like seven or ten days, where Dubois has to do two weeks in Canada. Because... For the U.S. and for most of the world now, since the CDC and the WHO have said that the incubation period is shorter than originally thought. So now, like, they have to quarantine for 7 to 10 days, where Canada is still going by the old standard of 14 days. So, differences in how things are ran there. So, Dubois is not playing anytime soon for Winnipeg. It'll be at least two weeks. Um... Where Line A and Rosovic, it may be only seven days. It just depends how they test. So, just let you know that one too. So, all right. Other than that, I will see you all next video. Uh, if you are watching this and you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Help me and this channel out, and hit that notification bell to be notified when you when I drop a new video. If you're a subscriber, thank you for watching. If you're not either, if you're not a subscriber. Thank you as well for watching, and make sure to like, comment, and share, and let me know in the comments what you think of this trade, because I, I, I think it's going to work out for both teams. We'll see how the, I mean, Dubois, I know his dad is a 
coached over there in Winnipeg, so he'll be closer to his father at least. So we'll see how that works out. But I think it's going to work for both. Let me know what you think. Just keep it civil. That's all I ask. But other than that, I'll see you all next video. Bye, everybody.